wanted to share with you some of the lasting comments that Joyce Kainoa mentioned. She reminds all of us that John Van Dyke was her attorney and that he got her off. And when they confiscated her and arrested her, they took her boat, her engine, and all of her fishing gear that she had. But he returned it to her, at least the government returned it to her, and she never forgot that. And she reminded us repeatedly about how John Van Dyke was her attorney. But I want to speak to you on behalf of, of the Office of Wine Affairs. And, and I have a prepared speech. So I stand before you today as a humble servant to a yet to be reestablished nation. And I offer our thanks to a man who was one of our strong, strongest advocates, one of our staunchest allies, just what he did for Joyce in the early 70s, and one of our first diplomats. John Van Dyke treated everyone with graciousness, respect, and aloha, and he treated Hawaiians as not just the hosts of Hawaii, of the Hawaiian Islands, but as representatives of an unjustly overthrown kingdom. Not only did he help to establish what is now the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and the Native Hawaiian Trust, but he continuously advocated for recognition and honoring of Native Hawaiian rights and responsibilities. He gener generously provided his time, intellect, and energy to assuring that our kingdom's wisdom and laws were not only remembered, but were upheld for the good of Hawaii's natural resources, her people, and her culture. He systematically helped to lay a legal foundation for Native Hawaiian rights, and that can be used by so that it can be used by legislators, courts, agencies, and grassroots community efforts. And this is where Joyce and I come from. We represent the grassroots in the state of Hawaii, and for her and I, it's our home island, Molokai. John may have been a professor, researcher, and writer of international acclaim. But he also was a zealous advocate in courtrooms and in boardrooms and a kind and willing listener and advisor at the personal and community level. He respected every level of discourse, was open to learning any perspective. He built bridges of understanding between diverse cultures and backgrounds, saw problems as opportunities for solution and was as generous in his guidance as in his praise. He humbly enabled other people's successes. His students and colleagues honor a man who taught through example and in the classroom how to seek excellence in all they did. His extensive legacy includes the legions of students who we urge to continue to carry forward his efforts for justice, forgiveness, peace, and universal kindness. As Native Hawaiians, we gratefully recognize that John charted a course for us based on our values and our homeland. We, he helped us na to navigate what had been the unfamiliar waters of Western law as he created a legal framework for the future of our nation. He never lost sight of the goal of nationhood for Hawaiians. He kept steering each issue toward that ultimate destination. And through his brilliance, legal knowledge, he was able to maneuver each issue within the context of rebuilding not, not only a nation, but its legal defenses. Native Hawaiians will forever be indebted to John Van Dyke, his wife, Sherry Broder, who fought zealously by his side for us and his family, for he adored and in whom he took such great pride and comfort. His family values, compassion, need for justice and expertise made his arrival in Hawaii during the 1970s 
Hawaiian Renaissance extremely fortunate. From the solidification of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation through the 1978 Constitutional Convention that codified Native Hawaiian rights and created the Native Hawaiian Trust and OHA, creating case law for Native Hawaiian water and land rights, documenting Hawaii's complicated land history, readily assisting in gaining reparations and apologies for past wrongs, John Van Dyke consistently and patiently advocated for Native Hawaiian organizations and individuals. Yet somehow his attention and gifts were also tuned to the needs of the disadvantaged and the unfairly treated population of the world's lands and sea, seas. The world in general and Hawaiians in particular are better for John Van Dyke's life and legacy However saddened we are at his loss, we focus instead with gratitude for his many gifts and with determination to carry forward the work that he began. I'm issuing a challenge to all of you, your legalese brains, and the work that John stood for. He took the downtrodden, he took this whole sculpture, and he laid a foundation, and we are so grateful for him for doing that. We wish his uhani, his, which is his spirit and his family, the peace and aloha that he sought for and share with all of us. And we say thank you and to mahalo, John. Now you can clap. When we presented John um, a box Hawaiian flag back there, I was deeply moved because that is the symbol of the nation of Hawaii, and we have not formed our nation. So I ask that you folks continue his legacy, pick up the banner, continue to work for the unjust, and to make that crooked path straight, and to stand for justice, and to help the people of Hawaii, as well as the Native Hawaiian people. So on behalf of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and as a Native daughter, as Joyce is saying, we, the work is not over. And in the old civil rights days, they said, what, we shall overcome. And we ask all of you to support Native Hawaiian issues and to continue to advocate for its rightful place and its kingdom to be restored. And I thank you to allowing me to say this at this day on John's memorial service. So mahalo nui, and God bless all of you, and especially, I wanted to say one more thing. Your program is a precious gift from Sherry. She painstakingly selected the photos, she wrote the text, and so often when a man and a, hus and a husband and wife team do this work, they have to, their children stay behind, but you have been blessed with the precious children's photos as they were growing up. So take care of the program. Keep that on your bookshelf as a remembrance of a great man that gave of himself. And I like you look at me as the native people of Hawaii. Mahalo nui.